Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is the Wix Online Meeting 265, August 22nd. I think my kids are back in school by the time we have the next meeting and everything's normal. That's pretty crazy. Summer is almost over. These meetings are recorded for those of you that aren't with us right here, right now. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about what we're going to talk about. We have a 402 update. I hinted before the meeting that uh, this is going to sound a lot like last week's meeting. Uh, the next slide will explain why. Then we'll do triage. And then we'll do questions and comments. Uh, we don't have any big topics to discuss. At least Bob didn't give them to me ahead of time. Nobody else sent anything in. So I guess in that way, this meeting will be a little bit shorter. So without further ado, what's going on with Wix 402? We're going to slip it again. Again, the goal is not to have a 403. We have someone like doing a big, huge, one of our big customers doing a big validation. And if they find things we want to get them fixed, then we don't want to do a bunch of releases. And we don't have anything else pressing for 402. We have just some small fixes that need that we should get out, plus the things to unblock these big customers. So we're going to let it go. Like we, Again, we don't have a strong timeline to this. It's mostly to make sure that we uh, mop up everything and avoid having a 403. So we uh, push back this again for a couple weeks um, to the next meeting is kind of the, the big thing, not knowing anything between. Again, nothing has changed, and we keep uh, going over on over and such. So that's the state of 402. It's pretty quiet, pretty chill. Um, just the bad bugs that we found. So that's that. Um, I guess we do trash now. Bob, ready to talk about trash? Why not? All right. Triage. We have some bugs, some issues, some things. At the top is the default major upgrade behavior and localized error message 7605. Uh, we discussed this last meeting, yes? Yeah. All right. Didn't you come to any about... conclusions, though. No. So you want to talk about some more here? Well, uh, so I, I have not done any whips since this one, um, which does not mean that I'm blocked by this one. It mostly means that I've had busy weekends. Mm -hmm. uh, but as you point out, the next meeting will be in September, and then I will officially go, oh, crap, oh, crap. Mm -hmm. Except not exactly like that. And there will be some ranting because, well, I want it to be done by, you know, now. And I'm not. So, yeah, I, I do want to talk about this and, and figure out what we're going to do. I, I have submitted PRs for the other two features. Mm -hmm. um, and if we take up this whip, well, if we take up uh, some version, depending on which version, if any, of this whip that we take up, it impacts the other two PRs that I've already done. And um, yeah, like I said, does not directly impact my next thing, which is the naked file whip and maybe implementation in the next month or so. But yeah, I, I would like to resolve this issue one way or the other. All right. So the challenge of doing that is that I want to think about the default symbol thing or okay. the virtual symbol, the upgradable, the overridable symbol. The, yeah. But I haven't even thought about it enough other than to go, this is such a good idea and I barely right. have a name for it. Um, so th that's, that's breaking me a little bit bit and honestly naked file is untethered to this it, it, yeah apart from the same person doing the implementation i agree with that yeah well yes the, the implementation and the impact of it will not have any impact on this I agree. um if you want to push it another two weeks that's fine that that i would like to do that because i just had mentally already pushed this okay two weeks that's, with the default thing that's fine all right all right. If you can't tell, we've all been a little busy with the day jobs. So just kind of all time sucked up right now. Um, although I do want to tackle a Wixbug, potentially Wixbug. We need to go investigate something today. All right. Let's go. 7673. File name, ID, and source confusion. Did we not talk about this already? I feel like we've already... No. We haven't. All right. This came in in the last two weeks. Time warp. I am clearly uh, unclear. All right. So this person is confused about the interactions between file ID 
and source and name. Is it mostly because of the behavior in three and four changed on the generation of ID? And the doc did not. Oh, that's the problem. Oh, the, that's bad. The, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah that, all right. So confusion expected if the doc still says what uh, what V3 said. Yeah, that's not going to be good. All right. So yeah, we should fix the doc. <laughs> yep. All right. Yeah, let's do that. And if you don't want it, I'll take it. Um, no, I'll take it. Yeah. One of us should sort that out because that's bad because the interactions between these is interesting. And when you get the hang of it, it's very simple and it works really well but if the doc is telling you things based on v3 it's a very much not the right answer so yeah all right cool <laughs> that's a good one all right um name right, real quick for those people who are like but well, well, what's the answer up real quick file id is now generated if you don't specify file id the id is generated and we try to generate a stronger ID, a more random ID than what Wix3 did, which was, well, hey, generated. if you don't specify an ID, we'll just use the name. Yeah, the problem so is that Wix3 not... didn't generate, it defaulted. Oh, it defaulted, all right. So the problem, that's nice if you're just like, hey, the file name is the ID, I could just refer to this by its name. That was pretty nice. The problem is, in the case where you have lots of files and maybe you have two files the same name, but in different folders, they collide. And so that was bad. And so we decided to go with the, we're going to generate the ID like we do everything else. And if you want to refer to a file, then give it an ID. That also played along really nicely with the access modifiers so that if you give an ID, it's public. And if you don't have an ID, it's private and all that kind of stuff. If you don't know what that means, go back to the Deployment Dojo show to episodes like 41 or something like that. And I have a whole episode about all that, which is a very cool feature that probably nobody's using except us a little bit. Anyway, um, so file ID is now generated where in the past it would default to the name and the name defaults to the source and the source is a more powerful way of specifying the name. Although I think the source will default to the name if you don't have a source at all. I don't know. See, I, I was not actually a fan of where V3 ended up. Yeah. Because kind of... it, it, you could go in or out the defaulting went multiple directions. You did, and and that it it, it it's confusing. Uh, I was confused. I have been confused. Um, so yeah, I I don't know which bits survived in V four. Um, the good news is the simplest case is usually the best. So you know, file source equals, and you'll get what you want. If yep. you need an ID, specify the ID you want. Yep. And if you want to change Avoid the name. Specify the name. Yeah, if you do, if you have a weird case, go it's, ahead. It's pretty Change weird. Change the name. Yeah. The problem is it's not unusual to think, hey, I'll specify the file name. You're like, yeah, I actually just need to tell yeah, someone. Yeah. The more important thing for Wix is to know where to get right. the file from. So that's actually a thing you want to specify. So anyway, anyway, uh, that's a fun. And it's come a long way since Wix V1. Because um, mm. V1 had actually an SRC attribute modeled after HTML and it was all lowercase and then we just slowly morphed it to where we're at now. Anyway, um, that keeps getting refined as we keep trying to get smarter. All right, 7675, burn detects the same per user related bundle twice, once for 32-bit, once for 64-bit. Oh, fascinating. Why yeah. does it do that? Okay. Because it always looks in both 32 and 64 bit hives or related bundles, because that should work cross bitness. Yeah. There's only uh, one hive for HKCU. That is correct. So oh. oh, okay. The problem is it, if it was just <laughs> detection, it'd be fine. The problem is it's planning. It finds two and plans two. That's bad. And then the, the, the upgrade of the phantom second bundle fails because of course the first bundle removed itself oh this is pretty bad it it doesn't affect the behavior but the logging is oh scary okay so oh because the upgrade is not vital everything's fine correct right, right oh right. all right the second Thank upgrade goodness. fails oh yeah I, okay. I would have brought it up sooner if it was a yeah. You know, yeah. Failure. Okay. Okay. And I can see how the testing then doesn't catch this because it's not the testing is looking at the log file and saying, "Are there two lines for this?" Like, right. Okay. Um. Yeah. Let's fix this in five. I'll take a yep. swing at it because I'll be in burn. Okay. Um. Okay. Whew. I was. 
Oh, man, scare me there for a minute. All right, yeah, okay. It sounds straightforward. Per user doesn't need to search twice. Got it. Okay, seven, six, seven, five. And or we should look at whether... Sorry, I, I was... I, I thought I'd do it. Um, oh, but I'm well. happy. To, no, I'm it. Yep. No, no, no. <laughs> no takebacks. Um, it, it entered my head that yes, we should not do the check for per user bundles, but also it's theoretically possible that we could end up in this state with across businesses. So it's, I wondered if the check should actually be finding a duplicate, you know, an identical bundle in the second pass. Do you only upgrade if you match businesses? No, 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 sorry. Detecting two related bundles with the same bundle ID. I guess it's not really, it's not the, it's only theoretically possible. Never mind. Okay. Yeah, that would be Fix really strange. You. Yeah. But basically, you're saying if you find the same thing twice, don't do bad only things do it to once. it. Yeah. That, okay. Yeah. I, okay. That's interesting. Yeah, there. All right. 7677 net .net compatibility check is badly fragmented. Bob? That wasn't completely apparent from the title. Um, when when the uh, that the new net framework capability check is kind of what it is, kind of sorta. Um, the custom action authoring was just kind of shoved into the existing fragments for the NetFX uh, native engine custom actions. Um, unfortunately, that means that you refer to either the engine custom action or the .NET check, you get both in your MSI. Um, <laughs> it's it's mm, yeah, it's okay. it's a slow. I call it a slow no op um, because. Both of them have immediate mode custom actions that mm. run. Yeah. Okay. And if you haven't authored the other thing, the custom action will run and say, oh, yeah, but I'm looking for a XXX table. There isn't one, so I'll quit. Nonetheless, you've run the custom action. It takes some time to, to launch it and for it to do its very little thing and quit. And that's just that's boorish behavior on our part. So yes, it should not. Uh, they should be separate. So I have this episode in the deployment dojo a couple back <laughs> about fragmenting your your uh, code and refactoring mm -hmm. it. Sounds like that should be done. Actually, Bob already did it. Bob watched the episode and was like, oh, I now know how to fix this. No, that's not true. Bob. Knew yeah, this well, before all that's that. exactly what happened. <laughs> that's exactly what happened. All right. Yes. Cool. So uh, so trim it down so you only get that which you asked for and not more. Right. Right. Uh, following the principles from that. So, yeah, good. Good, good, good. A bug fixed. All right. Ice uh, 7680. Ice incorrect with version greater than 128. <laughs> is this this is the second meeting in a row with an ice bug? Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, that's external. Then you go take it up to MSI. Um, the Windows installer team, and this continues in our bucket of, yeah, let's just write these better than they do. Yeah, especially this one. Yeah, we there have are lots of twists and turns, and, you know, you, you, the major upgrade has the allow same version upgrade uh, yeah. attribute, which triggers an I61 if you use it, which it technically should, but it's surprising when it comes right after you know, you're using a feature that yeah it's it's one of those you said this anyway. therefore we should disable that kind of thing right right and another reason why we should get rid of ices and implement them all inside wix which is yeah easily easier said than done uh do we need to keep this does this tell us anything that we didn't know already uh there's a bug in this ice but it doesn't tell us anything more about the ice working in a particular way other than buggy. So if we were to implement I-61, would we know anything from this? I don't think it would tell us anything. Yeah, all right. So let's resolve this external and it goes to the installer team and our solution is still the same. 
Re-implement all the ISIS. Yay. Okay. Um, 7681. Failed to bind CLR error when executing custom actions. Okay. Someone didn't do the great template. Oh, sandbox issues. Yeah. Okay. They have this. Installation should execute when directed. And then there's some discussions about this. I think I saw the discussions going by that it was... Oh, no, it was just this. Yeah, evoking Sandbox from PowerShell script. Yeah, so anyway. So I have been using Sandbox a bit more, and I have seen interesting and strange things um, that only happen inside the Sandbox. Uh, I was trying to install... Oh, I tried to install the VC Redis, an old VC Redis in the Sandbox, and it failed on some engine action, or no, a fusion action. So something with the GAC and it just would not let it go through. But it worked on a full machine, no problem. Uh, so, If you have uh, NetFX 3 on your on the host, is NetFX 3 present inside the sandbox? I believe so. Interesting. Okay. I was curious what the... Cause, you know, it's a very different shell, certainly, but I'm, I wasn't sure if it was a very different, you know, kernel-level stuff. Yeah, I don't know. But they're talking about this KB and things like that, so... Um, I don't know what that KB is. Anyway, um, I, I, I don't know. Someone could look at the, I'm, I'm not going to look at the, I guess we could put it up for grabs if someone wants to go debug the sandbox issue. I'm not sure there's anything we can do either. I'm not sure it's, might not even be us. It could just be sandbox does weird things when trying to do this, but. Well, I mean, it, does it only occur in the sandbox? That's what it says, sandbox. Well, we'd be having a lot more people complaining if it was just failing on these stats outside sandbox. So, anyway. I, I probably, yeah. <laughs> so, anyway, uh, yeah, up for grabs. Someone could take a look at it if they want. That works. It's like, yeah. Cool. I've I've seen weird things in sandbox and haven't taken the time to go debug into them because there are some little bits of difference of things there. Seven six eight three building native custom action on ARM platform fails to find Wix header files. I thought we added oh Wix three. Uh, yeah. All right. Cool. Don't don't care. Move to Wix four. That's where ARM is supported. That's pretty easy. Not a thing in Wix three. Cool. We can resolve that as fixed in Wix 4. 7685, resolve Wix references always refers to extensions on error. Because <laughs> that's the most important things. Aren't they? No. Um, okay. So if you've created a direct reference to a Wix lib, it'll still call it an extension. Well, even without a direct reference. You have a project reference to a oh to a wizard. It'll do that too. Wizard. Okay. If, if yeah, okay. If there's an error, if it can't find it. Gotcha. Oh, I can see where this might live. Yeah. Okay. Although that's that's strange. That numbers. Yeah. Go ahead and give this to me a five. That number is odd. W X E zero 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 one is pretty low. That almost means like a. I a yeah. I wonder if crash. That's a being it, coming it out? could be. This not as a warning. Hmm, that's, uh, oh. hmm. okay, maybe the no, maybe no, there's just no right. numbers. So I don't. I, I'm curious enough that I'll take that one. I'll look into it. That's interesting. Okay. Um, that yeah. Like I want to understand what's going on there. Otherwise, I don't know. How do you know if it's a Wixlib or a Wix extension? I don't know. We'll see. Could look at the file association. Yeah, yeah we would. Way. Yeah, it would be the extension. That's about it. Otherwise, but yeah. All right. 7687, oddities excluding in via Visual Studio. This is Heatwave. Yeah. Yep. Heatwave. Oh. Heatwave, Heatwave. Heatwave. Cool. Yes, it is. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Could we'll I ping, that ping those attractive people at Fire Giant? Yes. The, this issue needs to go move over to the, the Fire Giant things. We haven't had one of these in quite a while. Um, so that's all right. But yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Exclude a file with dots and assuming it's excluded. That's not a oh, remove. Oh, actually, 
This may be related to, yeah, this, ah, I see, he found it. Yeah, there's another one where removing files doesn't work in Wix. This could be a dupe of this. Or it might not. Yeah, okay. Um, still, the, <laughs> yeah. This may not be being ghosted in Heatwave because Wix isn't removing it because that other issue where if you try to remove items from the automatically added list of files, Wix does that later than inside your Wix project. So people expect to say, hey, I have an item, do a remove of this. But given the way the Wix uh, targets are all laid out, they happen later. So you say remove this thing from an empty list, nothing happens. And then the file that you asked to be removed along with all the other files gets added later to give them the order, which I was like, yeah, but apparently C Sharp does something to make this work. <laughs> so C Sharp projects make this happen in the correct order. And so that issue I'm pretty sure is assigned to me to hunt down. Yeah, so, um, so this may not be an issue. Like I, what I'm saying is that Heatwave may do the right thing already and it's just that the project isn't able, isn't communicating that because of the Wix bug. So I don't know if we should send this to the fire giant people yet, because it might be a Wix bug. How about we, we, we send it to you first and you decide? Yeah, probably the right thing. Yeah, okay. this is tied. It's already tied to the other one, so that's good. Yeah. Yeah, this may all come down to the exclusions not happening. I say it differently. The behavior in Wix 4 is the behavior in Wix 4. It's just not the one people want. So I'm looking at making the behavior work the way that everybody would like it to work in Wix 5, which is that when you put these compile things. So it's not wrong. You can use the remove. You just have to do a lot of extra work for it to work. It's just not as much fun. So, all right. Is, that's... Is that, does that require the SDK targets manual thing? Or is that yes, that's one of the ways you can do it. You can manually oh. import the SDK targets and then put yours at the end. Right, right, right. It's things like that. Um, so it's just, except CS Proj works. So now I'm like, well, if it works for them, it should work for us. <laughs> and I just didn't realize. So when I wrote the first initial implementation, it was for. All right. So yeah, that's good. We will uh, call that good. All right. So that is triage. Going back to the slides, things people want to talk about, stuff going on out there. Um, as you can tell, Bob and I have been busy, so we haven't had a lot of pushing things through. Um, we have someone pushing a, a change uh, through uh, the firewall extensions, which is pretty cool. They've been working on a pull request over there to get rid of the XP-isms from uh, the firewall stuff, which I think is pretty neat. So mm -hmm. uh, we'll see if that continues and if he's able to be successful there. Probably would be good if we had an issue tracking it to have discussed it before a PR generally. But I know this came on as a knock on to another thing that had an issue right. or something. So he's just kind of like continuing his way through. So there's that, but it still might be good that we put in that pull request to say, hey, this is great. Great also if we have an issue to track the work um, to do all that. So uh, we might still do that. Anyway, so there's that. Um, what other things can I fill while well, other people think about questions and comments they might have? Um, on my list coming, probably the biggest change coming to the Wix issues that we'll see is that it is on my list, hopefully before the next meeting to finally get our issue template put together. So we have an issue template. Uh, sorry, we have an issue template that's like, hey, fill in these things, you know, Please delete this part and stuff like that. The goal is to move to the issue forms where there'll be boxes that you actually fill in the stuff. So it's a little bit more directed and forces you to put things as opposed to people like, I don't feel like entering all this and just delete everything and put it in. And we have to, you know, put their issue back together rather that's than following our please. template. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, so that's a, a thing that I'm hoping I'll have uh, before the next meeting is that, that, that template on um, templates. There'll be a couple. Uh, for all the different types of bugs you could create. Let's see. I think those that's like one thing that we hopefully will see is issues coming in that look more formal, the issues being open when that template is there. Although we might not have any issues open by the time I get the template done to review that week, but we'll see. Um, other things going on, things out there? 
chat is quiet, which is totally fine. Um, I think that's all I have. So I, everything's on track to be back uh, September 5th. That's the day after Labor Day, right? That's correct. Hey, hey. so that'll be first day of school. And I think kids are all gone like that. I have I have one entering middle school, which has a completely different time schedule. But it's like he starts school at 730 or something like that, which is crazy. Oh. <laughs> it's like, whoa. Um, and then I think the other one still starts at nine, which always cuts this meeting close. But I think it'll all work out in the end. Um, yeah, that's what I have. All right. Quiet out there. All right. So back in two weeks, we'll do this again. There's Deployment Dojo Show. Uh, Bert, I'll see you there. I hope you usually show up. It's always great to see you guys. Any of you are, of course, all welcome, including those of you that watch this later. This video, when it comes out uh, later today, you can join anytime. Those are at Wednesday at noon 30 uh, Pacific time. Where So where this is 9.30 on Tuesdays, that's noon 30 on Wednesdays. Um, all right. Two weeks from now, we'll be back and we will do this meeting again. And maybe we'll actually, we'll have 402, although we don't have a forcing function. So I'm not gonna make any promises because we don't have to. So I guess that's all I got. Until then, you guys take it easy. Bye. Bye.